like tangent lines. Taylor polynomials give us a method for estimating functions at nearby points. In the real world, estimates aren't going to be very good if we can't get any control over the error in them. So, for Taylor polynomials, we'll control the error using what's called Taylor's theorem. So, let's get some definitions up first. So recall, our Taylor polynomial for function f, the nth Taylor polynomial, what we're going to do is, we're going to load up a bunch of powers of x minus x0 raised to a power. x0 is going to be our center. The coefficients of each power are going to be given by, we take the nth derivative of f, you evaluate the center, and then you divide by n factorial. For Taylor's theorem, we're also going to have what's called the remainder function. That's just going to be the difference of f of x and your Taylor polynomial at x. So that's measuring the actual error when we estimate at the point x. What's Taylor's theorem going to say? We're going to have a function f. I'll be able to take n plus 1 derivatives of f on some interval i where our center x 0 lives. Then for each x in this interval, there's going to be an x prime between x and x0 such that, and then the punchline's down here, we can get an actual calculation of our remainder as we're going to take the n plus first derivative of f, evaluate at this point x prime that the theorem guarantees, multiply by x minus x0 raised to the n plus first power, then divide by n plus 1 factorial. So the point of this is going to be the remainder is looking a lot like it should be the next term in the Taylor polynomial. The only difference is going to be we're going to be evaluating at some different point x. Okay, good thing about this, we've got a method for estimating errors. Bad thing, it really doesn't give us any idea how to find this x prime. It just tells us that it's between x and x0. So in practice, what's going to happen is you're not going to try to find your x prime. You're just going to take the maximum of all of those points evaluated in your n plus first derivative. Let's take a look at an example just to make this more concrete. So our function is going to be f of x equal to x to the fifth plus 1. And the problem is we want to estimate f at 1.1 using the third Taylor polynomial. Then I will use Taylor's theorem to estimate the error. So, I want to center my polynomial at 1 because 1 is going to be the closest point to 1.1. It's going to be nice for our function. So what we're going to do, we're going to need the derivatives up to the third derivative, and then we're going to evaluate them at 1. Dividing by factorial gets us to our coefficients. So I evaluate f of 1 is going to be equal to 2. The first derivative is 5x to the fourth. Put a 1 in there, and I get a 5. And then you'll see that you'll get 20 and 60 if you do it for the second and third derivatives. Then we're going to divide by factorials. So remember, 0 factorial, 1 factorial are both going to be equal to 1. So these go over as is. 2 factorial is equal to 2. 3 factorial is equal to 6. So we're going to get 10s for our second and third coefficients. We load them into the polynomial as so. And then I'm going to put my 1.1 in and see what comes out. So I'm going to get a 2.61 for our estimate. OK, in the real world, you may not be able to get the actual number, so you're going to need to know the error, and that's where Taylor's theorem is going to come in. Now, since I can work out x to the fifth plus 1, the actual error is going to be f of 1.1, and then we get 2.61051, so your error is going to be 00051, okay, right down here. Now let's use Taylor's theorem to see how bad the error is, assuming we couldn't get hold of the actual value. All right. So what does Taylor's theorem say? It gives us this gadget. I'm going to need to know how to compute the fourth derivative at this point x prime, which lives between 1 and 1.1. Now, I don't know how to get that x prime, so what we'll do is instead we'll just take the maximum over the whole entire interval, and that'll bound that point that we're interested in x prime. It'll make our estimate a little bit worse, but not going to be the worst thing in the world. So let's go ahead. So our remainder going to be less than or equal to 1 over n factorial times the distance from 1.1 to 1 raised to the fourth power. And then we would put this fourth derivative of f evaluated x prime in here, but we agreed we're going to replace it with this maximum. 
So I just have to figure out what this maximum is, and then I'm going to get my error. So I get the maximum. I'm going to take the fourth derivative. It's 120x. We'll graph it, and then we'll see what the max is over our region from 1 to 1.1. So if I plot the two points, I'm going to have 120, 132. Then we connect the dots, and then we see that the max here is going to be 132. So I'm going to put that in there, and then we'll note we're going to be less than or equal than 0 0.00055 for our error. So my estimate's going to be 2.610. And we know that the error in this estimate is going to be bounded by 0 0.00055. Okay, look, the real error, note, just the difference between the function and the polynomial. So we're getting that this has to be less than 0 0.00055, and we already saw that it's going to be 0 0.00051. So Taylor's theorem agrees with us in this example.